Hi everyone, this is Tin Man Lee here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about the six reasons why I switched from Canon to Nikon for wildlife photography. So first of all, a disclaimer is that um, all the uh, observations I had for um, this is my personal opinion and uh, just my uh, visual inspection, nothing through any lab tests and stuff. So don't believe me, just uh, try it out yourself and let me know how you think about Nikon. So I have been a Canon user for 18 years. I started with the Canon D30 in 2001. Since then, I have changed to the Canon Rebel 7D, 5D Mark II, 1D Mark IV, 1DX, and 1DX Mark II, and 7D Mark II as well. Before, whenever people told me that Nikon is better, they have better glass, I would just walk away. When I went to online forums and when I see people discussing whether I should get a Canon or a Nikon, I, I would just laugh. These cameras are pretty much the same. It's all about a photographer, right? So it was 2016 December. My friend Carl told me that he was going to, to Hawaii to photograph the lava. The trip was led by Bruce Omori, Tom Khalil, and uh, Ryan Dyer. I have met uh, Bruce Omori a few years ago at an Nature's Best Photography Award Ceremony. So one morning, Carl and I went onto a helicopter ride. This photo was not us. It was Rick and another participant in the group where they flew very close to us. Carl and I had the same camera settings the whole time. We were shooting the same thing. He was using a Nikon D810 and I was using Canon 5D Mark IV and the Canon 1DX. So that evening, I met up with Carl in his room before we headed out for dinner. He told me that he had just transferred the files into his computer. So I took a quick look. My jaw dropped. The photos of his looked so much sharper and had details in the shadow area that I had never had in my photos. It looked so three-dimensional that I really felt like I got sucked into the monitor and almost fell off onto the lava. I looked at Carl and said, what's going on? Carl looked at me and said, I had the same feeling. Two years ago when I was in a workshop, everybody else except me were using Nikon. When I compared their photos with mine, I had that same feeling. Right after the trip, I just sold everything and I switched. Now, Carl was much more calm than me. He always did a lot and a lot of uh, detailed research before he made any drastic decision. So the next day, um, we had a photo critique section led by Ryan Dyer. We had a big TV screen attached to our computer. Rick, who was one of the uh, participants, he showed a picture that we all got two nights ago. It was a photo of this lava. It was almost like firework. And so I was pretty happy with my own photo. But when I saw Rick's photo, I saw so much more details. Mine almost looked like it's flat, but his is just so three-dimensional. And it was just the same feeling when I saw Carl's photos. So it's not a coincidence. Then another the participant in the group Arby started to show his photos and I felt even worse. His photo was just mind-blowing. Even more details than uh, Rick and Carl's photos, but at least kind of in the same league. So it turned out Arby was using the Phase 1 medium format camera that has 100 megapixel. At first, I thought all these were just hype, right? Like who needs more pixels and all. After the critique section, I talked to Carl. I said, dude, what's, what's going on? And he said, is the Sony sensor. So it turned out that Nikon Phase 1 and even Hasselblad after I did some Googling, they all use Sony's image sensor. And these images from the Sony sensor seems to have so much more dynamic range. I was gonna buy the Nikon D810, but the frame rate was a little bit slow. And I always wanted to have a camera that has eight frames per second or above. So let me tell you a story. So I went to Alaska in 2012 in a trip led by Charles Glasser. But that year, the salmon run was a little bit too early. So when we got to the location, we didn't see any bears for six days. At the end, it all came down to just this one second when this bear decided to pounce for salmon towards our direction, like head on. 14 frames, right? So, so it lasted for about 1.4 seconds. On the 10th 
frame that's where i got the photo that won the nature's best photography grand prize if i had a camera that it was slower than 10 frames 9 frames per second i would have never gotten this shot my minimum requirement for a camera is uh, 8 frames per second i thought i would never do big prints until i i won some awards in nature's best photography and my photos have to be printed at 32 inch or sometimes even at five feet to six feet which is 60 inches in one year i was invited to do a solo exhibit in hong kong hkust i had to do 44 photos of 32 inch long and four photos of 60 inches now we have to do a little bit of mathematics a regular printer can print 300 dpi meaning that for each inch in the in the, in the print they need about 300 dots which means that we have to have 300 pixels per inch to print we have to print a 30 inch photos for example a 30 by 300 which is 9000 pixels in order to print it without any artificial enlargement if we have a uh, 20 megapixel camera right so that would be about 5000 pixels long for the file if we need to print something that needs uh, 9000 pixels we have to interpolate almost double the size and imagine if you have to print a 60 inch photo that would require 18,000 pixels and even if you think that providing about 75 percent of those pixels would be enough which is still a lot of interpolation indeed in november 2018 when i went to washington dc to attend the nature's best photography exhibit in terms of purely just the image quality two photos in the exhibit uh, stood out I, I mean i didn't spend a lot of time to look at each photos uh, one of them was steve uh, matthews photos and the other one was um, arby lipman's photo steve used a nikon da50 and arby used canon 5 dsr uh, so these two photos the tonality the details the sharpness everything was just was top notch and i think one of the main reasons was that they all have a very high megapixel so most of the wildlife photography that i did were action photography like birds in flight or animals moving running pouncing and those so when i first used the nikon i almost felt that the initial acquisition was not as quick as canon but surprisingly when i got home to look at all my photos there was a significant increase in the keeper's weight meaning that the photos that were in sharp focus increased and especially when the action was erratic flight path of the bird or when the animal was doing something very unexpected but at the same time i saw a blog post by arthur morris check out the link below he was also switching to nikon and he mentioned the main reason was the autofocus and then it dawned on me maybe during the time when I was on the helicopter, the Nikon was able to get the accurate focus much quicker. So the accuracy of the focus actually makes the photo sharper. And because of that, it also creates more details. I don't know. Number five is the uh, high ISO noise control. And uh, because I do a lot of wildlife photography at low light where most of the animals are most active in dawn and dust, something that can be printed at ISO 3200 is a minimum that I need. And number six is the super telephoto selection. What I found out is around maybe six to 800 millimeter is really where I got the best shots. So it seems to be a sweet spot. So I want to have a lens that has this focal length range. Currently, um, Sony only has a 400 2.8. I don't know when they will come up with a 600. Uh, in order to get to 800, I would rather put a 1.4 teleconverter on a 600 rather than a 2x teleconverter on a 400. So getting back to uh, what I said originally is that why waste your time these cameras are all similar and turned out it's not if i'm paying pretty much the same price for these high-end cameras and if i know that certain brand can create images that have a higher keepers rate and that uh, it can create 45 megapixel big prints with decent ISO performance and really good dynamic range. I would do the switch. Now, of course, I don't know your objective is. Maybe you are not gonna print big. Maybe you are not into action photography. Then most of the cameras are pretty much the same. 
So I hope that helps and if you have any comments, please uh, write it down below and uh, make sure to subscribe. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time.